Over the years, I've spent a lot of time and used a lot of tools to customize my terminal prompt. I used to use OhMyZSH, which gives you just an incredible amount of flexibility and configuration. Then I used the Pure Prompt, which is kind of at the opposite end of the spectrum. You've got very little configuration, but it makes it really simple and easy to use. For a while, I used Power Level 10K, which is kind of a nice medium. It provides a lot of configuration, but also a lot of hand-holding that makes it easy to set up, almost exactly like Pure. But recently, I switched to Starship, and the main reason is that it's really, really easy to configure and maintain. I'm the type of person who's likely making small changes to their terminal every couple of weeks, and I wanted the configuration to be something simple that I didn't have to relearn every time I wanted to make a small change, and Starship really clicks for me in that way. So let me show you how we can get this set up. We can start at starship.rs, which is the website, and you can see an example of it in action here. It's really easy to install. You can grab this shell script if you want. I'm on a Mac, so I just did brew install Starship. Once you've got that installed, you're going to want to add it to your shell's configuration. So of course I'm on ZSH. So let's take a look at my ZSHRC file and you can see it's a one line here, eval Starship init ZSH. Of course, if you're not using ZSH, it probably supports whatever you are using. As you can see, we've got support for bash and fish, even PowerShell. Okay. So once we have that in place, we can create our config file. So the config file is going to be in the home directory slash dot config starship dot toml or toml. If you've not heard of Toml, it's like another simple configuration file language, very similar to YAML. And so the way this works here is we've got our format at the top, and this is just the actual elements of our prompt. So the username, hostname, directory, all of the pieces. And each of these items is something Starship provides. You can either use the out of the box configuration, which is usually pretty good, or you can customize it further. So for example, when I show the directory, you can see that I want the style to be blue. If it's read only, I want to use this lock icon. And there's some other truncation things that I would have to look up to to remember exactly what those mean. Each one of these is really easy to configure in this Tomal language. Now, if you're not sure what the options are, we can head over to Starship's website, go to configuration, and here's the whole list right here of all of the things that you can do. And a lot of these are gonna be language specific. For example, maybe you want to use Elixir and you wanna show maybe your version of Elixir, or maybe you wanna show a particular environment variable. Maybe you're on a laptop and you wanna show the battery percentage when it gets to a certain level. That's something you can configure here. So let me show show you what I've got. I've got a lot of the typical stuff, username, hostname, directory, git stuff. I like to have a fill here, which pushes the rest of this over to the right side of the screen where I have command duration, any jobs that are running, the time, and then my prompt character on the next line. So as you can see, this is kind of what that looks like here. Because I just backgrounded Vim, I have this little red icon here telling me that there is a backgrounded job, got the time of day. If I have a long running command, you can see I do get the duration, which is kind of nice. I'm going to actually move out of my config directory here and I'm gonna to go to my dot files, which I happen to know also has the same file because I have it aliased. Now that we're in a Git repository, we can see we have some Git information here. So as you can see, this is pretty straightforward, but maybe I wanna add something to this. So let's say I use Node.js a lot, I want to add the version of Node to my prompt. For starters, I'm going to come here and look at Node.js. Yes, it's supported. So there's a module for Node.js, which is great, the currently installed version of Node. We can see exactly in what cases we're going to show that. And then we have all these configuration options. For now, we could just start with the basic version of it. So maybe after my directory here, I will do Node.js. And the slash just escapes the line break. Now, the nice thing about this is almost immediately it takes effect. Right now, I'm not in a project directory that has a a JavaScript file, but maybe we can just echo something into an empty JavaScript file. And as soon as we do that, you can see now we have via and we have the little node logo there, and then we have the version. This is showing in our prompt, but it's not exactly how I would like it. I kind of don't like having via, and I would probably rather put this over here on the right side. So let's go ahead and move this down to, let's say here. Yeah, just after the fill before the command duration. That looks good. If I want to customize the format, I'm going to need some configuration, but let's see if that works. Okay, yeah, that put it over here. That's where I want it to be. So that looks good. I want to go ahead and change the format though. So let's create our Node.js block format is what I want. Now, how do I know format? Well, first of all, it's pretty typical that all of these are going to have a symbol, a format, and a style that you can combine in some way. Also, if I come over here to Node.js, I can see this is what the default format is. So let's go ahead and copy that 
for starters. And let's paste that in here. So we can see we have via space, then we have the square brackets here. And this is kind of like a markdown link where we have square brackets and then followed by the parentheses. And the style goes in the parentheses and then in the square brackets, that is what is styled by that style. You can see the default style for Node.js here is bold green, which works for me. So I'm not gonna change the style. And then we have symbol and version being displayed that way. So let's go ahead and just drop via, go back to the terminal, look at that. Those look exactly like what I want. And so really, I think I'm gonna leave it there. Now you'll notice, now that I'm in a Git repository and I've made a few changes, we can actually see some things showing up here as well. We can see that we've added four lines to this repository. This I happen to know means, I think, that we have both unstaged changes and an untracked file. And so I think that is where we're gonna leave this. I like this Node.js configuration like this, and so I will probably commit that. Now, if you're not sure where to get started, you can find some default configuration with Starship. So first of all, pretty much all of these items in the configuration here will have some kind of default. Now, the other thing is, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, we have presets. And this is another great way to get you started. What you can do is check out any one of these. So for example, nerd font symbol, if we take a look at this, we can see this configuration basically shows you what a good symbol option would be for all of these different modules. And pretty much all of these are gonna be languages or frameworks and their associated symbols. Some of these are tools like Git, but we can see we've got Golang, Haskell, even things like memory usage. You could show like a little uh, memory icon beside the value. And so these presets are a great way to find some configuration to help you get started. Beside the nerd font symbols, we have bracketed segments, which will just give you a bunch of like the format lines for these types of bracketing if you like that look. And then we also have plain text symbols as well. This will give you symbols that are just actually the text. And that's another way you could do this. That is a quick look at Starship. It's a new tool that I've been using daily for a couple of months now, and I really, really like it. So if you're looking for yet another way that you can customize your prompt, or maybe you just want to be able to waste some time playing with ZSH, go ahead and check out Starship. It's pretty cool. If you have a custom terminal setup, I would love to see a screenshot of that. Point me to your .files repository. I'm always down to nerd out on terminal stuff. So let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.